As ambassador to Venezuela since January 2024, you've gained first-hand insight into the country's current economic and political landscape. How would you describe the state of play there? Well, um, we know that um, prior to my arrival, the country had um, undergone a series of sanctions. Mm -hmm. Um, So when I arrived there, the sanctions were in place and the country uh, more or less just come out of one of the most difficult periods. Mm -hmm. But it prior to my going, it was not uh, it was worse than situation when I arrived because when I arrived, it was more a stable environment um, with access to um, basic commodities and, and different things. The restaurants were all functioning and so forth. So they were coming out of, of, of some of the effect of the sanctions as to whether or not the effect of the sanctions was across the board is another issue. I think um, the majority of the population would have been experiencing um, different degrees of difficulty Mm -hmm. in accessing uh, basic commodities. Got you. Now, given Venezuela's ongoing challenges, what are some key lessons you believe would be insightful for Guyana as an emerging regional powerhouse? How can we take from the experiences of our neighbor in navigating our own path forward? Well, I think one of the things would be clearly um, understanding this industry Mm -hmm. and ensuring that the industry, you reinvest in the industry, you you conduct a, a very important maintenance program, working with the operators and so forth, um, so that you don't permit um, sort of degradations to occur. Secondly, that um, the allowing the private sector to operate and function, um, at the same time, government having some degree of regulatory oversight, but um, not getting involved in the the operations of the industry from a private sector standpoint, allowing the private sector to flourish and to to do what they have to do within the confines of the regulatory environment. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that would, and then the other issue is to remember that the resources um, it's a finite resource, and therefore you've got to be very clear in the terms of your investment in the non-oil economy to sustain the growth that you will witness, or else you will have a spike, and then after a certain number of years, you decline. Whereas in the case of Guyana, Uh, It's blessed with a number of other resources, but it requires investment to sustain and develop those resources. And that's the direction I think um, we're heading, but we we have to ensure that the non-oil economy is going to be stabilized and grow to sustain our development as a a, a a good economy. Thank you, Ambassador. Now... It's, we are all well aware of the historical tensions between our nation, our two nations, uh, Guyana and Venezuela. And just recently on October 3rd, we celebrated as a country the 125th anniversary of the Arbitral Award, um, which deemed the Essequibo region fully within our sovereignty. So in light of that anniversary or on the backdrop of that anniversary, how do you see diplomatic efforts progressing between Guyana and Venezuela, especially in terms of maintaining open dialogue and fostering peaceful resolutions? Well, I would say the the historical differences, Mm -hmm. I wouldn't necessarily say the tensions, but the historical differences 
um, of our interpretations of the arbitral award, which um, just marked the anniversary, um, has gone a, a long way. And uh, we are very clear that the award was perfect and final. Um, and those, those words echo through and through from the time the award was made to this day. Uh, the provision um, with respect to the Geneva Agreement of 1966 um, has led us to where we are today in terms of the ICJ process. Um, Guyana has really stated very clearly, one, that first of all, the area is for us, as with other Caribbean countries and South American countries, a zone of peace. And that we will comply with the rulings of the ICJ process, which clearly emanates from the Geneva Agreement. So um, we await those rulings. Guyana is presenting, Venezuela has presented. Um, they've got to present again in response to what we have submitted. Mm -hmm. And then we will go again probably by December. And so this process is, is important. Um, and where the chips fall, they fall. But that doesn't negate our efforts to live as peaceful neighbors and to have bilateral collaborations in terms of looking at the development of our two countries and our peoples. And you would say that the survival of the entire region is dependent on <coughs> us remaining as a zone of peace. Right. And I think that that has echoed it through and through the conferences of CARICOM mm -hmm. and other regional organizations, an understanding of this, pro this issue within the United Nations and the OAS. And so we are not interested in um, doing anything that will not maintain this region as a zone of peace. You mentioned the gas to energy project and another important development that will be culminating with that uh, critical initiative is Guyana's output, oil, our oil out output uh, increasing and, and touching uh, 800,000 plus barrels, um, and that's per day. What is your message to the international uh, market, those stakeholders looking to enter Guyana during that new era of energy dominance? <clears throat> well, I think Guyana is encouraging other investors to come in. Um, there are many possibilities out of oil and gas. Um, we have to look down the road at the possibility of maybe refining oil.